What is going on? I am Spencer Tillis. I'm Trayvon Miles. And this is the Delmarva Sports Insider coming up in just a bit in today's episode. High school playoffs are underway, but could Stephen Decatur move on with the win today against Huntington? And Hawks Hornets round two, this time in Dover. Both teams needing a win with Miax right around the corner. And Cambridge got their first taste of the postseason as well on Friday when they took on Mardella. Stick around to find out how they did. Welcome to yet another episode of DSI, ladies and gentlemen. So much to get to, Spencer, as usual. Yep. But where else will we start this week besides the conference championships that took place? Kent County taking on Y High. What a matchup here. Marquand Green and Tory Brittingham, two of the best young point guards in the game. And early on, it would be Brittingham out in transition, getting the lay-in to go. The ball game early on was a good one. Sophomore Green started to get it going. Mid-range pull-up, Spencer, check. Three that, from the that, corner. Give me some more. Check. Getting it at the top of the circle. You're not going to step up, huh, Wahai? Okay. Check. Steph Green Curry on the shot. 17 boy. points in the first half. Kent counted by three at the break. Game tied under two minutes of play. Brittingham Ooh. gets a steal. Tosses it to Jordan Brittingham. Joe misses it. But Tori's like, yo, cousin, I got your back. Indians <laughs> get a stop. And my man, Zave. Mm. Xavier bringing in Sims. Two huge free throws to push the lead to three with just 10 seconds left. Last chance for Kent County now. Shamar Turner with the heave and it's picked Ta off Aww. by Sims. Why high escapes with a 70 to 67 win. And I'll tell you, I said escape for a reason because they definitely <laughs> almost lost that one. The Indians, with all of them watching me right now, I know they did not play their best game. They, I don't know if it was a previous matchup with, uh, that Wahai played against Kent and they thought Kent would come in and lay down or a lack of focus, but Wahai looked bad at the defensive end. Waller, my man, if you were watching, it's time to get out the bricks. <laughs> a lot of credit due to Kent County, though. They went right at Wahai with a why not attitude, and I uh, got to give that to them. The thing is, I don't think they're the only ones that expected them to kind of just roll Kent County. I think the general consensus was this game was going to be over basically by halftime, and that really surprised me the way they played. But the fact of the matter is, I'm not so convinced it was why high having necessarily the worst game. They didn't play well, but Kent County has gotten a lot better. And look out for them. I think they have a chance of making a pretty deep run in this oh, tournament. They sure. got studs across for the sure. board. And the guys are actually playing, you know, their best brand of basketball right yeah. now that they have all season. They're young, too. Don't tell anybody. Oh, Marquand Green. Yep. Two more years of him terrorizing. That's going to be fun. Well, the Head 11 Championship game was last night up in Dover as Polytech boys team looked to remain undefeated against teams in Delaware when they took on Milford. And the Bucks looking good early on, though, trying to pull off the upset. San Martinez hitting the glass here, comes up with a rebound, puts it back up and in for two. Second quarter, and Milford still out in front. Henry Naismith, get to know that name because he is good. The pump fake gets to the cup. Mm. The left-handed finish right there, the good. scoop for two. Bucks were up eight after three, up eight. But here comes the Panthers. Devon Mallory, you've probably heard of him. Yeah. The little teardrop on the baseline is good for two. And then a few plays later, Ricky Hicks, I love this point guard, Man, dumps Hicks. it off to Mallory. The two-handed slam. Look out below. Pauly out in front. Milford not going away, though. Naismith. Going to hit this little turnaround on the baseline. That's good for two. His team back within one. And now the Bucks down three with just 10 seconds left to play. Devin Kravitz gets it. Goes for the tie. Off the iron. That close. Wow. Polytech, another wow, team wow, wow. back from the dead. Survives that one as well. 47 to 42. Wow. There you're handling over champs. And wow. Yep. I mean, I tell you what, Polytech, uh, deservingly so, I've considered them the best team in the conference. And clearly they are that taking this game. But this game was, again, a lot closer than a lot of people kind of expected going in. I still think that they have a good chance of winning states. The problem is their draw is brutal. I mean, they're in the pod of death right there. They're likely going to have to go through Conrad, who's, or Concord, excuse me, who's unbelievable, as well as they have a chance of playing Sanford. Three of the best teams in the entire state are on that top side of the bracket. It is not pretty. I mean, it's going to be tough for them to try and make a yeah, deep run. But a little bit about this Hanover Championship game. We know that Polytech did not play their first, their best game, and they still won the ball game. I don't know if it was the big stage, but the stages only get bigger from here, Polly. As noted, they are in the group of death, but it, it, it would definitely not be easy to get out of. 1997, 18 years since the Hanover last had a state champion. If they want it, they can certainly get it. I think Polytech can get that championship. The best thing I love about it is everybody from downstate, anytime Polytech beats them, they're all rooting for them. I mean, <laughs> they are not just playing for Polytech, uh -huh. it feels like. It feels like downstate. they're playing for all of downstate. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, back to Maryland now. Queen Anne's Lions 
hosting the opening playoff round against their rivals, Kent Island and Lions in the jungle. Mm. They will attack <laughs> Jaron Brown with the hoop plus the contact. I tell you what, Spencer, if this is a football game, it'd be a great matchup. The Bucks cannot wait to get those pads back on. The score Andrew is almost in football. <laughs> gets the miss and goes back up. Look at Andrew thinking football is that much closer. And for good reason, because this game out the gate belonged to Queen Anne's. Austin Kill with the drive right there off the right wing. Lions mm. up big. Kenny Ward here takes it up with a pretty take. He missed the layup, but clearly he did it on purpose because he got it right back there. Goes up with it. Queen Anne's all over their rivals, 72 to 23. And Queen Anne's is really, really interesting to me. This is a team that got obliterated when I saw them on opening night at Bennett, but they did manage to finish 13 to 3 in the North. They draw the matchup of Parkside, which, whoo, it's a very tough draw <laughs> in the first and the second round. They need their absolute best out of Kavanaugh, Ward, and Kill, their three captains. Hey, Kavanaugh can make some things yep. happen. He can put the ball in the bucket, but I tell you what, this speaks more about who they were playing than anything else. Kent, yeah. or Kent Island, rather, finished that game with just 20-some-odd points. I mean, Kavanaugh almost outscored him completely by himself. And it's kind of funny because, I mean, they laid the wood on people when it comes to football, and I'm <laughs> sure they're looking forward to the fact that the best part of their season now <laughs> is that it is over and they have a chance to kind of lay some more uh, wood on people now that, you know, lacrosse is around and they're going to make people uh, pay for what they had here. But, I mean, tell you what, that was that wasn't pretty basketball up there. No. I mean, I tell you what, they, Queen Anne's, look for them to do some things. Ken Island, uh, you know, maybe next year, maybe we'll down see, the road. They got Parkside, man, that's tough. Parkside is going to be definitely really <laughs> tough for them. Well, there's another game we got to talk about. That was North Carolina in action last night as the Bulldogs looked to avoid an upset when they hosted Easton. And take it straight to the fourth because that's when things got interesting. Tavon Emery hitting the glass for the Warriors, comes up with a rebound, then steps back, pulls the trigger from downtown, and buries it. That got the Warriors within one, and they were still pushing. Cortez Murray with the fancy up and under move right here. The Ooh. between two defenders, Ooh. that is pretty. That gave Easton the lead. Last chance now for the Bulldogs. They're going to run a little elevator screen, just perfect execution. David Bailey for the tie. Ah. Just off again. How many times have we seen that? It feels like. Well, the Warriors would hit their free throws, pull off the upset on the road. They take down the Bulldogs 56 to 52 the final. And Easton, a lot like Kent County. And, you know, we're talking about a lot like Queen Anne's. Yep. Ugly early on yep. in the season. I mean, yep. it was not pretty basketball. Yep. They've come around. They're starting to grow on me a little bit. And the Warriors have definitely gotten better a lot of few, or the last few games that I've seen them. They've really kind of stepped it up. It's going to be a very interesting test, though, because, I mean, playing, you know, North, or North Carolina is nice, but playing in the Waller Dome, that's a different animal. I mean, different. the Indians are going to be ready to go for this one, and I don't expect it to really go their way too much for Easton, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but that uh, game between Easton and North Carolina was just a classic matchup between two very familiar teams. North Carolina with the two wins over Easton during the season, but it's hard to beat a, three te three, a team three times, excuse me, especially a team like Easton with the vets they have, along with head coach Marty Bailey Jr. What playoff experience Easton has really, really showed last night, and I thought that was the difference in the game. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, it was close down the stretch. They found a way yeah. to make the plays. This yeah. is the team, after it's all, that you know, teams, men yeah. went deep last year, yep. so they had a chance to make it happen again. Well, it's time for our first commercial break, but coming up next, Washington was looking to start yet another playoff run, but how'd they do this morning against Crisfield? Highlights on the way. Hello, my name is Devon Malley, starting power forward for Polytech. You're watching Delmarva Sports Insider. 